Welcome to section 4.3, sketching graphs of functions from an equation. I've started this already because my um, hover cam froze and I had to start the video all over again. I'm not going to rewrite everything. But we are basically taking everything we know about functions and we're going to sketch a graph. All of your pre-calculus stuff, so zeros, y-intercept, holes, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, oblique asymptotes. These things you all learned in your pre-calc class. And again, at the beginning of the year, this year in calculus. The rest of this stuff you have learned this year in calculus when we've been talking about derivatives. And the stuff that we got from here, we talked about increasing versus decreasing, relative extrema, horizontal tangents, vertical tangents, concavity, and points of inflection. Again, we're going to take all this stuff that we know, find all this information about this function, and then sketch a graph. So looking at this f of x equals x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 1. Very definitely, we can factor that or factor the denominator into x plus 1 times x minus 1. And then finding all of our stuff out from pre-calculus, let's look for our zeros first. Zero is going to be when that graph or that function is equal to zero. And the only way that this fraction can equal zero is if the numerator is equal to zero. And x squared plus 1 can never equal zero, so there aren't any here. A y-intercept happens when x is zero. So if we plug in x equals zero, we get 1 over negative 1, or negative 1. Holes. Well, holes come from factors in the denominator that cancel out. And there aren't any. Nothing cancels. So there aren't any holes. Vertical asymptotes. Those come from factors in the denominator that do not cancel. And neither of these factors in the denominator cancel, so we will produce a vertical asymptote for this piece at x equals negative 1, and for this piece at x equals 1. Horizontal asymptote. That's going to be when you're going to compare degree in the numerator with degree in the denominator. So the degree in the numerator is exactly the same as the degree in the denominator. So we take the fraction of the leading coefficients, in this case, which would be 1. So our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 1. And again, we're getting that horizontal asymptote by comparing the degree in the numerator with degree in the denominator.
And the last one, oblique asymptotes. First off, if there is a horizontal asymptote, there will not be an oblique asymptote. If there is an oblique asymptote, there will not be a horizontal asymptote. Hold on one second. Just put it under the door. Somebody's dropping off a quiz. Okay, so um, if you, but you can you can have one or the other, but not both, or but you could have neither one. Um, essentially, to check for an oblique asymptote, we're going to look for the degree of the numerator to be exactly one more than the degree of the denominator. Degree of the numerator is one more than. the degree of the numerator. Uh-oh. Degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. Sorry. I was thinking, um, you're probably wondering why I'm not writing over here. It's because I'm saving this space for something else. And I was thinking about telling you that, which is why I started writing things twice. An oblique asymptote, none. All right, there's all of our pre-calculus information. Now, going on to our calculus information. To find f prime of x, we would have to do a quotient rule. And I'm going to save some time here. I'm going to save us some time and just tell you what that derivative is. You should be able to work through that on your own, but just in the interest of time, that quotient rule is negative 4x over x squared minus 1 quantity squared. And we are interested then, once we have that derivative, in finding where that derivative is equal to 0. f prime undefined and f prime non-existent. f prime equal to 0, so where this derivative is equal to 0, that will happen when the numerator is equal to 0. So at x equals 0. f prime undefined, that's coming from when the denominator is equal to 0. And this will equal 0 when x is plus or minus 1. f prime does not exist. There aren't any. Again, that's predominantly from piecewise defined functions. All right, looks like we have um, three critical numbers here x equals 0, x equals plus or minus 1. However, this plus or minus 1 is not, these guys are not critical numbers because they are not in the domain of f of x. Again, remember, a critical number identifies a place for a relative maximum or a relative minimum. And this can't possibly be a maximum or a minimum because it doesn't even exist in the function. So there's no way it can be a maximum or minimum. x equals 0 is the only critical number. Okay, please join me on page 13 to finish up this problem.